A flash chamber is used to generate streams of saturated vapor and saturated liquid. So you bring in some steam, and in this device called a flash chamber, it comes in at 700 kilopascal, it leaves at 220, 220 kilopascal, so there must be a restriction somewhere. Maybe think about a little restriction where there's a pressure drop. And then inside the flash chamber, you collect up the liquid, typically using gravity to help collect it on the bottom, and drain off the liquid, and the vapor on the top. And because you side the flash chamber, you have a two-phase mixture in equilibrium. It's saturated liquid off the bottom and saturated vapor off the top. It's well insulated, so there's no heat transfer with the surroundings and you gave, you're given some data, so state one, state two, and state three. Notice no state zero for dead state and no flow exergy column. All right, you could calculate those and put them in if you wanted, but there you go. Let's do this. Uh, for the data given, determine the saturated liquid mass flow rate. What are we asked to solve for? M dot for the liquid that's out of state three, isn't it? M dot through the three. And typical units, uh, kilogram per second? Yes. Sure. How do I do that? Well, I take a control volume. It's an open system, one in, two outs. And I can do a mass balance. I can do an energy balance. I can do an entropy balance. I can do an exergy balance. Let's do a mass balance, first of all. So for the mass balance. I know it's steady state, one in, two out, so the one in, m dot one, what comes in there, has to equal the sum of the two outs. Is that a good equation for the mass balance? m dot one is equal to m dot two plus m dot three? Yeah, I didn't write three very clearly, did I? Looked like a two. Looked like a two to me. All right, now what about another equation? energy balance, okay, I have the flow energy coming in with that enthalpy m dot, right? So h1 m dot 1 is what comes in, it goes out h2 m dot 2 uh, plus h3 m dot 3. There's no work transfer, I look for it, there is no work transfer. Uh, there's no heat transfer, that's stated in the problem statement. It's steady state. I need, there's no information about changes of potential or kinetic energy of these flow streams, so I neglect it. And there you go. Now I check my equations and I say, hmm, I'm, I'm given m.1, I'm given h1, h2, and h3. The only unknown I have in this equation is m.2 and m.3. Two equations, two unknowns, we can solve for that problem. And when you solve for that problem, you'll get an equation like this. M dot 3 is equal to M dot 1 times a difference in enthalpies over the difference in enthalpies H2 minus H1 and H2 minus H3. You'll see this pattern often. Do the math carefully the first time through, and then you'll naturally get faster at solving two equations, two unknowns, and you're splitting a fluid stream, and enthalpies will be there. When we substitute the numbers, we find that the mass flow rate out for stream three, which is our saturated liquid, is 27.84 kilograms per second. How do I calculate m dot two? m dot two, which is the What's one? That's right. Go back to this equation right here. You have 30, and you just calculated m dot 2, 3 to be 27.84. Hence, you calculate that this is 2.16 kilograms per second. All right. Part C rate of exergy destruction in the flash chamber. Well, I'm asked to calculate E dot D. The rate of exergy destruction. What are the units that I anticipate for this rate of exergy destruction? Kilowatts. Very good. So let's do this. Let's uh, uh, pick.
figure out how I'm going to do it. Whenever you are calculating, you can do an entropy balance and then use the relationship that E dot D is equal to the dead state temperature times the rate of entropy production. Or you could do an exergy balance. Either one. Well, let's do it with sigma dot. So you do an entropy balance and you find that the rate of entropy production is equal to the mass flow rate going out at 2 carrying with it its entropy at 2 plus the mass flow rate going out at 3 carrying entropy 3 that's a net flow out with the fluid streams and it came in m.1 s1 and think about it if there's any production it has to be carried out with the other two fluid streams so the flow, the net flow out with the two fluid streams is going to be greater than the flow in. And that's how you read this equation. So we substitute numbers and we find that the rate of entropy production is 0 0.5606 kilowatts per Kelvin. That units look good for sigma dot? Yeah, yeah. I see a lot of heads nodding. You're following me. Thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Plus also, guess what? I think you're getting more out of the lecture if you're, you're like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've been in lectures and other places where they started with the word A and I didn't know anything from then on out, right? It's airplanes the whole time. We don't want that. It's not fruitful for you to be lost in a lecture. So I'm glad that you're following along. So the rate of exergy destruction just multiply by the 298 Kelvin and you find that it's 167 kilowatts. But I want to solve the problem uh, that we just solved which is a flash chamber problem. So maybe up here I remind myself flash chamber problem. Okay, so I like to put that there. And to organize my thoughts I'll put a little table of state and I'll put pressure in units of kilopascal and then I'll put uh, temperature in degree C and I'll put enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram. I like to put units with my values S in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. This is my style and I come over and I have state 1, state 2 and state 3. Now I look at my problem statement what do I know about state 1? The pressure 700 kilopascal and the temperature 160 degrees C. This is the beauty. I want Excel to help me get that property enthalpy. So I say equal sign starting a formula go and get enthalpy underscore as a function of pressure temperature underscore for H2O for oxygen which is the letter O not the number zero. I always mess that up. Then I do a parenthesis and I say go get out of this cell for the pressure comma this cell for the temperature close parenthesis hit enter and hope it works there you go so that's how you get the enthalpy as a function of pressure and temperature how about the entropy S as a function of pressure temperature for H2O parenthesis pressure comma temperature close parenthesis enter and that's how you get it now hmm, state two what I like to do also is I put a little thing over here what helped me fix that state pressure and temperature fix that state but state two it's the pressure and it's saturated vapor so it's the pressure and saturated vapor hmm so the pressure is given 220 I don't know the temperature but isn't that the saturation? So it's T sat as a function of pressure for H2O. Now you can see I'm going to scroll down and select the right one. And once I've highlighted it in blue, like that's the one I want, I hit tab and it finishes out the typing. You hit tab right now, boom. Now then I can just click on that pressure close parenthesis hit enter and there you go that's my saturation temperature it's around 123 degrees C for that pressure okay now we go to the enthalpy hmm it's H 
sat. So it's H of liquid or vapor. You have to kind of guess the thing. And so HV, every, you know, it has a little syntax in there. So it's enthalpy of saturated vapor as a function of pressure for H2O. So I kind of, if I want it for 22R, great. If I want it for R134A, great. But I want it for H2O. Hit tab, then go feed it the pressure, and there you go. Now somebody says, uh, how do I know the units work? Come up here. What does this key do? It just tells you a little bit about that function. So what, what, what it's doing is, is saying the function HV underscore P underscore H2O, you're feeding it pressure. It's going to cell C5, which has a current value of 220. And it's saying the enthalpy in kilojoules per kilogram, it's saturated vapor as a function of pressure in kilopascal. And so it's going to return the value 2710. See that? It tells you a lot about it. So hit that function key for help. What's the name of that function key other than help key? I don't know. I'm not an Excel expert, right? Do you know the name? I don't know. Hit, hit, hit the OK. If you wanted to use BTUs and other things, you can. Uh, what you do is you find that you have a third argument and you put ENG in it and then it interprets the pressure in PSIA and the temperature in degrees F and then uh, the enthalpy would be in BTUs per pound mass. But this is how you learn more about those functions. Let's get S of saturated vapor, S of V as a function of P for that. Close parenthesis, there you go. What was the last one? State three, pressure in saturated liquid, wasn't it? And so it's same, and this is gonna be the same. So I'm gonna just grab that lower box right there, and when you pull it down, it brings that formula down. True? That cell used this blue box, which is cell C5, escape. Hit this one. This one goes to cell C6. The formula was brought down. All right. So this is equal to H of V or L? L. L. There you go. So that, boom, boom. And then SL, hit return. If you want to clean up your digits, you just use this over here. So you can clean up your digits a little bit. Those are too many digits. All right. So now that I have a, a lot of those things figured out, maybe I want to calculate, uh, maybe I'm given M.1, and that M.1 is in kilograms per second, and it was 30, wasn't it? Yes. All right. And then M.2 in kilograms per second. But didn't we calculate M.3 first in kilograms per second? So what was the formula for M.3? It was go get M.1, multiply by the ratio of H2, this one right there, minus H3, no, H1, divided by H2 minus H3, close parent. Does it look right? There's our kilograms per second. Move it over a little bit. And then for M.2, uh, take M.3, subtract off M. Dot, I'm sorry, M.1 minus M.3, and there you go. Look good? All right. Let's do this. What was S gen in units of kilowatts per Kelvin? Start with mass flow rate 2 times S2 plus mass flow rate 3 times S3, subtract mass flow rate 1 times S1, and there's our entropy uh, generation. Um, looks a little different uh, because I did it by hand before, and now I'm doing it with the computer that's keeping more digits. And then the EX DEST in kilowatts is equal to the dead state temperature, 298, times the rate of entropy production. If you need a little more room, you just grab over here and make it wider. And there you go. You can double click it even right up here, double click, and then it adjusts. 
very nice. If I want to insert a new row, then you just right click um, insert and it pushes it down. Maybe I want to put in the dead state. The dead state was 100 kilopascal and what, 25C? And if I just grab these two cells in that box and I scroll it up, it percolates up. So now I have H0 and S0. And if I wanted to add a column for the flow exergy in units of kilojoules per kilogram, it's pretty easy to do that. You have, what was our equation? H minus H0. So that's equal to H1 minus H0 minus 298. I'm just going to type in the dead state temperature in Kelvin times S minus S0, close parenthesis, but I forgot to start the parenthesis. So I'll come up here in this equation editor line and I'll put in my parentheses. So that's the flow exergy. If I want to drag this formula down, I'll do that, but I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag down and I need to leave those two cells right there. So I'll escape on this cell. I'll come up to this cell and for line four, which is the dead state, I want to put a dollar sign right in front of the four on the E4. How many people use dollar sign and know what that means in Excel? It fixes it, right? Yes. Leaves it there alone. So I want that for both H0 as well as right now I'm doing it for S0. So now when I drag this formula down, I'll get the right answer because that cell goes and gets H0 and S0 on line 4. Okay? And likewise, this value down here does the same. So can you calculate the rate of exergy destruction now knowing EF1, EF2, and EF3? Sure, let's do it that way. The exergy destruction in kilowatts, would that be equal to you come in with the mass flow rate 1, multiply by the flow 1 coming in. Oops. I got to do this times this. True. Minus the mass flow rate out at 2 times the flow exergy at 2 subtract the mass flow rate out at 3 times the flow exergy at 3 and hopefully that works. It works. Good to four digits. Maybe we want to compare. Is it good to, is it good to 5? It is. Is it good to 6? I have no idea. But that's too many digits. That's too many digits. Did that help? Any question for me? All right, thank you very much.